what's up all you happy vapors? Vape Malone here, and I would like to introduce... By the beard of Zeus. That's right, the Zeus Duel RTA by Geek Vape. Bum bum bum! Yeah, so single coil RTA wasn't good enough for him, they had to go and make a dual one. This thing looks pretty sweet though, I'll give him that. I don't know if I like it as much as the Zeus single coil, or the Zeus original, OG Zeus Anonymous, but we're gonna put that to the test today. We're gonna see if it's as good as the original or if it's better. Eh? Let's check it out. There it is. And all of its shiny glare glory right there. So let's get it open. Let's check out what we got inside the box before we get into the goods. Oh man, there's a multitude of items in this bag. Get an extra glass tube right there. Let's see what we got here. We got this nice little black tie event envelope. Uh, we got a warning card. Oh, well, I don't know why we would need this, but we got it. So if you want to give somebody a card, keep in mind you only get one of these. If you want to give somebody a, your card, you can give them this and be like, yeah, what's up, Zeus all day. Uh, and then we have a, oh, it's your one-way ticket to the warranty center. Hopefully you don't need that. And then that's it, that's all you get in there. And then we got a Manuel, a user Manuel, some, uh, Vooping literature. Uh, we'll save that. You never know when you're gonna need it. And then that's it. And then you have a clear case so you can put doodlies in. All right, inside, I'm just gonna dump all this stuff out on the table here because there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Oh, nice. So it looks like they give you the different colored O-rings here, some gaskets. Looks like a standard uh, 810 drip tip. Looks like we get a 510 drip tip here. Pretty fat, this little sucker. This looks like a 510 drip tip adapter. A bunch of other little gaskets and gizmos. You get two of these braided coils. Those look pretty interesting, but they look so interesting that I probably will not use them. Never really cared for braided coils too much. And we also get the infamous, the infamous tri-tool. Yeah. All right, and then we get a bunch of extra grub screws and all that jazz. So that's good, but at least they give you a ton of extras. That's one good thing about Geek Vape stuff, is they give you all the extras you could ever hope for, and then some. Now let's check out the Superstar. Here it is. Bask in the ambiance. So this thing is said to be 38.9 millimeters in height. It's gonna hold four mLs of juice in this with this tube on there. They do sell a bubble glass for it, but you have to buy it separately. That's kind of a bummer. It comes in four different flavors, this being the stainless steel. It's not a shiny stainless steel, it's more of like a sandblasted matte finish. But then they do have a shiny blue, a black, and a gunmetal flavor as well. So pick your poison. Here's the bottom, Zeus. Bunch of numbers, don't vape in a trash can, designed by Geek Vape. It's supposed to be 26 millimeters, but I want to measure it and see what it is at the very base and see if it's 26 millimeters at the base. Let's see what our gadget tells us. Go, go gadget calipers. Look like it's about 25 at the very bottom here. And then when it gets to the center, it will be about 26. So there you go. Now you know. Oh, and the height. Let's check the height on this thing. See what it is. Without the drip tip, including this little knuckle at the top, you got 42.558.5759. The 38.9, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's without the little drip tip knuckle. Now right, we got that out of the way. I'll show you everything on the outside and then we'll take this sucker apart. So see here at the top, we got this super wide slotted airflow. It's top airflow, just like the original. And then we have another slot on the opposite side. The airflow control does have a stopper. You know, good news is if you want to, you can close it off completely and then you can just not vape at all. No, ah, not really. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take off this drip tip. So this is a proprietary drip tip that comes on here. It is like an 810 fashion, but it's also like sleeved, kind of like the rip tip on the Faro Mini. Yeah, the threaded top fill. Let's see what's up with the threaded top fill. The entire thing wants to come unthreaded, so all right, awesome. 
nice little Zeus logo there inside the barrel. I do miss the exoskeleton thing or whatever the, the skeleton bars that were in there that said Zeus on them from the original. I really like that design. Let's see if we can get this thing. Uh, oh yeah, it was just on there super tight. Just like the original, it has the super wide dual fill ports and it's like, a I don't know if it's a quarter, maybe, yeah, it's about a quarter turn to get the top cap on. So that's really nice. You ain't gotta work too hard to get to your juice area. Let's look at the interior of the cap. Yeah, super domed on the interior there. And so what happens is your liquid is gonna be out here on this side. And then this little uh, chamber in there, that little gap in between the chambers, that's where your airflow comes down from these slots right here. Fun, it's science. Because I only believe in science. And then here's your glass section. The O-ring came off with it. And then here is the deck. It is a dual coil postless build deck. You can do single coils on this, but it is really meant for dual coils. So just so you know that. Remember we got that gold plated 510 pin right there. You can see it poking out at the top. So you see you got these little airflow ramps. Not really like the original. These ones are short and stubby, but you can see there is a little bit of a, a ramp there. It's diagonal at the bottom. So it shoots the air up towards the bottom of your coils. It's pretty sweet. We have the wicking ports. And uh, they look to be a uh, pretty good size there. And then, uh, yeah, your juice will come down here and hit it from the bottom. Enough about that, let's let's build on this thing and get it, get it wicked up and uh, have some fun. Finally! I'm gonna be building it on this Mage 217. That's what, I'm, what mod I'm gonna be using it on. Mage 217 is pretty sweet. It's a dual 21700 mod from Coil Art. And uh, we're gonna have a video coming out on this thing real soon. I'm gonna use my little tri tool. First of all, I'm gonna open up these lead slots. So they are using flathead grub screws in here, and I really enjoy that. I just like flathead grub screws. They last forever, for me anyways. You know, everybody has a preference. Some people like flatheads. Some people like the Allen grub screws. I just, I just get worried about the Allen grub screws because I've had a couple strip out on me. So yeah, there we go. And I think for coils today, since we're not gonna use those braided ones, we're gonna use some Coilology kit coils. We're gonna use these uh, Tricor Fuse Clapton's right here, some big beefy suckers. There we go. Let's pop these bad suckers in there. Suckers. Sucker. The only difficult part about building on a postless build deck is figuring out how long to cut the leads. That's, I mean, that's always the issue, right? I always like to try and use the drip tip trick. But this strip tip looks super low pro. It might be better to use the other one that comes with it, the other 810 drip tip, the standard 810 that comes with it. So I'm gonna try that. Line it up here to there and then snip it at the bottom. That's what I'm gonna do. So if you're following along, that's what I'm doing. All right, now I'm gonna just sit this in there. It's up a little bit too high. So, let's see if the lower drip tip will work. Let's see here. Yeah, so I guess you can use this drip tip as a cheat for the length. And just be sure that when you're unscrewing your flathead grub screws to make sure you bring them all the way out so you have that opening all the way open. Because, you know, sometimes when you're checking your coil in there, and you're like, well, it's not sitting down there and all. It could be sitting on top of that screw and then you could just keep cutting your lead until you don't have nothing left and you could waste a coil. I don't know if that made sense. I got it. This is gonna be the perfect height though. So yeah, use this drip tip right here, the sleeve drip tip. Use that as your guide. All right, let's get these things installed here. All right, so we got that one put in there. Let's get the other side put in. Make sure we got these grub screws all the way out here. 
I'm not taking them completely out. I'm just making sure the lead slot is completely open and unobstructed by screw. In we go. Not the biggest build space in here. I'm guessing that's going to help with flavor though because you know reduced build chambers usually lead to great flavor. With reduced chamber comes great flavor responsibility. Got both those in there. I'm just going to position them kind of over towards these little ramps. And there we have it. There it is. The build. And that's about as far as these little these little fins on the side here. You see those little fins? That's as far as it would allow my screwdriver to move over. So yeah that'll limit you on how far you can get your coil over towards those ramps do one final check make sure my leads are all snugly tightened down boom boom new coil yes it's reading this at a 0 0.05 resistance that can't be right i'm gonna see what the pulse does Yeah, the pulse is reading it at 0 0.06. No hot spots. All right, so after we had some issues there, some technical difficulties, I was reading the coils at 0 0.05, which is a little bit lower than it should be. I figured it, it should be right around 0 0.21 for a single coil. So it should be right around like 0 0.09 for a dual coil, what I was guessing. We put it in the pulse 80 watt, gave it a pulse. It actually fired it just fine, was reading it at 0 0.06. Pulsed it, got it fired up, and then put it back on the mage. And now it's reading it at 0 0.09 like it should be. We got it all G to G. I'm going to put this sucker up probably at like 95 watts, 97. We'll see if we can get these coils fired up for you. Glowing nice and even. Let this sucker cool down. Yeah, here's a shot of that build though. Just like I want it. Today we're gonna be using some Wicked Wix cotton. We got some of this stuff, it's super fluffy. We got this stuff on vapehappy.com. If you're into some super fluffy cotton, I would check that stuff out. The flavor on it's really good too. It just takes a couple hits and then the flavor already starts coming in real nice. Thread the loop. Boom. We've got that cotton in there. Now we need to figure out where we want to go with it. Do we want to tuck it down in there? I think I don't want to tuck it all the way in there. It's not a lot of juice that's going to get down there to the bottom. Almost like a GTA style, you know, so the juice can get and sit underneath and then the cotton sitting right on top so the juice can just go right up in there. I think that's how I'm going to wick this. And these are three millimeter coils. It's always good to keep in the diameter. If you're having trouble wicking and if you got too much cotton going on, you can always try doing a 2.5 millimeter coil or something like that. All right, so got just a little bit of the cotton fluffed out there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the other side and then I'm gonna fluff out this side. Just thin it out just a little bit. sitting right just enough to barely tuck it into that well all right and the juice that we're gonna be using today is this lovely h2o brie i think it's h2o berry but it is by taffy man and it is a strawberry watermelon taffy that may or may not have been hand pulled 
pretty good stuff. It's a little bit on the sweeter end for my taste, but I really dig the flavor. I'm, I'm not really big on taffies. I've tried plenty of taffy flavors. This one is by far the best one that I've tried. Gratuitous drip shot time. Boom. And there we go. Just let that soak up day. I'm gonna hit the sides here. Just put a little bit of juice on there to get it started. All right. So just make sure if your O-ring comes off when you take everything apart, just make sure that you take this O-ring off. Make sure you have it the right orientation there, and then I'm just gonna put it back on before we put the cap down. And we'll put this glass piece down here. And then there we go. I'm gonna take it off the mod for this part right here just to make sure I visually inspect it. Make sure I get it nice and snug. There we go. Nice and snug there. Put this uh, proprietary 810 drip tip on there. And now we're gonna fill it up. Again, this thing holds four mLs of e-liquid. So what you'll probably wanna do to get it filled up faster is just alternate sides because it's a very thin amount of space between the build chamber and the glass. But there we go, we got it all filled up. And since we primed it, we won't have to wait forever to vape on it. So let's test out the airflow. Oh, you know what? Before we vape it, I do want to show you, this is the original Zeus, the gunmetal version, and it is pretty much married to my double barrel. And I just wanted to show you just a little side-by-side -side comparison of the two so you can see what they look like. There you go, there's a little size comparison. This is not obviously the original drip tip that came with it, but yeah, you can see it's a little bit taller. It looks a little bit wider, just barely. But yeah, there it is. The airflow looks bigger on the Zeus Duel. Yeah, there it is. So for anybody wondering, this custom drip tip configuration I got going on here, this is the Ultim 510 insert from the Serpent SMM, and then this is the B2K RSA 510 drip tip. All right, so we got this on here. 97 watts, full open airflow on both sides there. Let's give it a vape. Cloud machine. Why are clouds white? No clue. I'm just a cloud machine. And I won't work for nobody but you. I'm just a cloud machine. Woo! Massive airflow. It's gonna get foggy in here real quick. That build gets warm. I'm gonna turn it down a little. I'm gonna turn it down to 90 watts. Let's see what we can do today. I'm gonna try out the other 810 drip tip. See what it tastes like. So that's what it looks like with the the other drips. Pretty flush. I noticed with the other drip tip, my lips are resting on this thing. So this one keeps my lips up a little bit higher. Some pretty intense flavor. Yeah. So that's what it sounds like at wide open. I'm gonna cut it down. Let's go halfway. So we'll go halfway open here. A little whistly. Come here, bitch. <laughs> Okay, so half airflow, this sounds pretty crazy. Let's go down to a quarter of the way open and see what that's like. That's a little less crazy. Really good flavor right there though. Yep, quarter of the way open, it's got really good flavor.
yeah so um that's the airflow situation we got going on i'm gonna take it back to full open I actually feel like it gives off a lot of flavor even with wide open airflow it sounds a little less crazy too We got plenty of bubbles, so it's wicking really well. Since Mikey's the uh, resident iron lung, uh, I want to have him come over here and try this because I usually mess with single coil stuff all the time. So I don't be like vaping all these big clouds and stuff. I'm going to have him come over here and give it a try. Maybe he can even do one of those fancy uh, wick tests, you know, where he just chain vapes it. <coughs> <coughs> it's a lot of vape. 90 watts, huh? 0.09 ohms. It's a little tangy. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. All right, wick test. Not dry yet. No, not dry yet. It's a lot of vapor. Still juicy. Vape's good. Tastes good. Go Knights. Thanks, Mikey. Appreciate that. He vaped like two mils of juice. No wicking issues. That's a pro. This thing has a ton of flavor. Even with that super low ohm build in there, it wasn't getting super hot. I checked it after Mikey vaped it and it was still, it was warm, but it wasn't like burning hot. So that's definitely good. The only cons that, you know, or negative Nancy's I could give this thing is it is a bit big, you know? So if, you know, big beefy tanks are not your thing, then you probably won't like this. Can't fault it. Flavor is amazing. The airflow noise, when you cut it down anything past halfway and down, yeah. So one third of the way open, let's try that. Still a little bit loud. So this is just barely, just a tiny bit closed. You know, that's acceptable, in my opinion. But this... Yeah, that's scary. You're gonna scare the crap out of somebody's dog with that, and dog may or may not bite your leg. I don't know. That would definitely be a con. It wasn't super easy to build on because that deck is so tight in there. So just when you're building, be really, really careful. You know, I, I would always suggest to build on an ohm reader just to make sure you don't have any shorts or anything before you fire it because it is tight in there. So if your coil is touching the other coil or touching the bottom or touching one of those fins on the outside, you could have a short there and you can melt an insulator or worse. So just be really careful with that. Other than that though, it's a good tank. I would suggest it. If you like vaping, you know, wide open, you like a lot of airflow, if you like tons of flavor, then this will be great for you. It's a solid tank. You got four different colors to choose from. You can get one of those bubble glasses, you know, that they sell separately. I think that'll upgrade the capacity as well. We're going to have these on vapehappy.com. We should have all four colors in stock unless somebody went on a shopping spree. Check one of these things out. We'd like to thank you for being a friend, traveling down the road with us and back again. It'd be really great if you could subscribe over here. Buy the Geek Vape Zeus Duel down here. Vape Malone. Oh. I'm just a cloud machine and I don't vape for nobody but you.